Hello and welcome. My name is Michael DeLiso. I'm a professional visualization supervisor with experience on projects such as The Mandalorian Seasons 1 to 3, Ahsoka, Captain Marvel, Venom, and many more. The single most important aspect of what I do professionally is camera work. And today, we're going to be looking at five easy but crucial tips to help you elevate your camera work. Tip number one, limit yourself to using a lens kit. For those not aware, a lens kit is any number of lenses that a production may have at their disposal. They are limited to only using these lenses available. These will typically include at least a wide, a medium, and a long lens. Now, 3D cameras have the luxury of being able to use any lens you could think of, even going down the decimal points. But if we're not given a box to play in, our cameras are going to feel all over the place, lacking any sort of rhythm. If you only use the same lens for every single shot, your sequence is going to be boring. Using your lens kit will give your film a consistent feeling, it forces you to make conscious decisions when framing up a shot. For example, do you want to go up a lens, say from a 50 to a 75 to get closer, or do you want to stay on that 50 and just push in? All those little decisions that you'll subconsciously make because you have a lens kit as opposed to just slightly going up a few decimal points is going to help really bring your film into a nice consistent feeling. Tip number two, simplify your camera path. When you start to animate your camera, you might fall into the easy trap of translating your camera all over the place, giving it a very wobbly feeling. Simplifying your camera path doesn't mean that you can't have a complex shot. There are plenty of complex shots throughout film history. All simplifying your camera path means is that instead of a camera going back and forth, side to side and up and down all at the same time while rotating, that can get very messy. Instead, you might be able to get away with just going back and forth, not going up and down, not going side to side, and letting your rotations on your camera do most of the heavy lifting for you. So you'll start to tilt and you'll start to pan and that's going to help your reach frame. Now coming from previous, I'm in a very live action mindset, but to prevent your cameras from looking too CG, think about how would they shoot this if they were going to go shoot this in real life. Oftentimes, a camera move is going to be on a single track, which is moving back and forth or just side to side. Simplifying the path doesn't have to be a linear path. It could be a nice smooth arc. What we want to avoid is any unnecessary movement that's going to cause weird parallax or wobble. Even with my experience, whenever I start scenes, I tend to make the cameras too complicated. But then I go back in and I start to simplify and it really ties everything together. And you can make interesting cameras that change framing a lot, but oftentimes those shots are a simple camera path combined with expert blocking of actors. Tip number three, think about what your shot is meant to convey. Cameras need intention. Your cameras help convey a story idea more than you realize. So it's important to take time to think about your scene and what you want to convey. For example, if a character is supposed to be overpowering in a fight, show him by framing him higher up, looking up at him. Angles looking up give a sense of just strength and dominating. When you cut to a new shot, there needs to be a purpose. You don't just want to cut to a shot just to cut to a shot. There needs to be a reason, some new information that needs to be told. And thinking about what that shot's purpose is will help inform you how to cover that shot. Tip number four, add camera shake. Now I know camera shake may sound like a no brainer, but it's one of the easiest things that we can add to give our shot life. Now when I say add camera shake, I don't always mean add a bunch and the camera's gonna be going crazy all over the place. We don't always need to see it, but we need to feel it. And that might sound a little weird, but when you have a very subtle camera shake, there's a natural feeling to it instead of being a static shot. When it's a static shot, it feels sterile and it feels uncomfortable. And that may go in your favor. But when you add a nice little subtle camera shake, just very subtle enough, it becomes natural. And that's what we're looking for. Most of my scenes, I do tend to use a very subtle shake, something that you could barely notice, but you feel. But then when I do action scenes, I typically use a high frequency camera shake that gives a lot of energy and a lot of chaos. That you see more than feel. It's very easy to go too far with camera shake. So be careful, dial in your settings, and once you have those settings on your rig, you're set to go, it's very easy. Tip number five, let your subject lead the camera. To help prevent our cameras from looking too perfect or too CG, we should always let the subject lead the camera. 
what that means is that we should be tracking our subject as if we're tracking someone in real life with a camera. If we followed someone in real life with a camera, there's no telling what their next movement will be. If they suddenly jump to the side and start sprinting away from us, we're gonna lag a little bit behind because we weren't predicting that. We weren't aware of that motion. So naturally, there will be a little bit of a lag in our camera and then we will catch up with them. Now, even though in our animated scene, we technically do know where they are going next because it is animated, we can fast forward and reverse and we can see everywhere where they're gonna be going. We don't want our camera to feel like it knows where everybody is gonna go where exactly they're gonna land. If we get ahead of our subject, we lose all natural feeling of our shot. Having our subject lead our camera allows us to have a natural feeling like a live action shot. Here's an example of our camera leading our subject. And here's an example of letting our subject lead our camera. Notice how the character gets a little bit closer to the edge of frame, making our cameraman need to catch up to our character. Bonus tip, study and analyze some of your favorite sequences to help understand how one shot flows into one another. It's very easy for us to get caught up in single shots, how pretty they are, how well animated they are. And all of that is important, but the most important thing that triumphs all is story. Our cameras play a part in this storytelling, just as editing does as well. A single shot may look amazing on its own, but if it doesn't flow in the story, it's useless. So analyzing our favorite sequences and studying the camera choices as well as the editing choices can help build this kind of library of knowledge for us in our brain for any future sequences that we may tackle that may be a little bit similar. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.